Hello and welcome to Deccan Herald's Bengaluru 2040 Summit. Today we have with us Chetan Mani, the co-founder and chairman of Sun Mobility. Hello Chetan. Hi. Thank you for agreeing to do this with us. So a lot has been happening in silos when you talk about future of mobility. And, uh, and uh, for the latest uh, of the things, we have the BMLTA bill which is you know, put out. And uh, in this context, what do you have to say about the need for a unified uh, body at the center or a state level to lead the integrated you know, uh, form of future of mobility? I think it's extremely important because today what we have is each of these are in silos. So be it the, uh, the metro rail, the buses, uh, autos, taxis, electric mobility, they're all not coming together. And if we can create seamless transportation for a person from when they leave home to get to work or vice versa, that's going to significantly increase public transportation. And as we've spoken today in the summit to maybe 7 to 80 percent. So if we have that goal, it's critical that all the stakeholders come together. Um, it would be good to see this plan if you're talking 2040, uh, what we would do in these next 17 years, measure it every year as part of a plan and see how we get to that. So I think it's a very positive um, outcome that this, this has been structured. The key is going to be how we implement on it and continuously course correct to ensure we can reach our objectives. So you spoke about you know the role of a policy maker, but uh, considering that there are a lot of players in this entire movement, we speak about the BM, uh, RT, uh, BMRT, uh, the Bangalore Metro, and also the BMTC. So, what is the role each of these players need to play in terms of you know uh, providing the unified body with the right kind of data? So, I think like we have a lot of data architect in Bangalore, be it an Aadhaar, UPID, and others. Um, what would be really good is to start to create this format of data that we could all share. Uh, and that's been a bit of a challenge. But if we create the open platform as an open operating system and data can just come in and, you, and APIs can be made, you get a lot of startups in Bangalore trying to work on that. And as long as we pr protect data from a privacy point of view uh, and ensure that it isn't linked to back to people, we believe this can be a very powerful thing. But it's also important to maybe integrate some of these organizations because they have to work seamlessly. So be it in London Transport or some of the global work that has been done in cities that have done this very well, we should learn from them that not only are we enabling payments that could be uniform, but also can the transportation come under the same areas that would really tremendously help uh, seamlessly link multiple modes of transportation. And, and when we speak about multimodal transport, right, uh, there are also these new forms of mobility which come into the picture, like the micro mobility and also the last and first mile connectivity, which is, uh, according to me, a key you know uh, piece which is not being addressed enough all this while. Which is why a lot of people are not preferring to jump onto this public transport. So, do you think that first and last mile connectivity is kind of the you know magic pill to solving this public transport riddle? I definitely think so, because I think that people use, if it's a rainy day, it's too sunny, people don't want to do that last one or two kilometers. And if they have to wait to get that transportation, they say, you know, it's much better to just take my personal vehicle. But if that is seamless, right, I think you can you see metro traffic and bus traffic increase several fold, right? And if we really want to reduce the congestion, have clean, convenient transportation in our cities, but, you know, action on multimodal has to be. The challenge has been that multimodal hasn't fit in anyone's jurisdiction, right? Each of the departments look at it. Uh, today's conversation talk that BMRCI will be taking the leadership in that. You know, I think that will be very helpful to see how we can link that and maybe under the larger bill that's being passed, if this is an integrated piece, we can see how this can come together. We also should create a, start, a platform for startups because the first mile, last mile is all about two-wheelers and three-wheelers and micromobility forms of transportation. And if we can make them more efficiently used, um, that would increase the earnings and efficiency of the entire thing and our, and our traffic. So creating connectivity uh, along this can really help. And give, I can give riders a very clean, convenient, and sustainable way of transportation. So in this scheme of things, right, how does somebody like Sun Mobility and the you know, solutions that you offer fit into this entire picture? Because uh, providing charging infrastructure and you know uh, the swapping in infrastructure at these key points. Uh, how, how does this entire uh, scheme of things change when something like this charging infrastructure come into the picture at exactly these places? So these spaces, all these places become hub spots for transportation. So what we've seen in cities like Delhi, for example, we're actually working with the Delhi uh, Metro 
and we've actually, on corporate ownership, putting out last mile transportation in joint partnership as public-private partnerships. This enables people that auto drivers to use it, but also come back and swap their batteries, and so they are now able to get you know, unlimited kilometers, and the infrastructure is right there. So there's no going to a gas station or something. It's actually maybe after half a day, they go back and two minutes swap. So if all of the hub points of transportation also become charge and swap stations, automatic electric mobility comes in. And so now you have a metro that's electric, you're coming on a vehicle that's electric and being dropped off in a vehicle electric. Your entire transportation is clean and that's where I think, you know, metros can play a large role in bringing electric mobility at its house. And so you, you spoke about how e-mobility also, you know, can and take this as an opportunity, just not to solve the problem of congestion, but also the problem of pollution, right? Yes. Which, which we are all trying to solve using this kind of. So we saw a lot of things happening on the front of e-mobility in 2022. There, there was, you know, uh, e-buses coming into the picture, a lot of things being done on that front. So in 2023, what are the things you are, you know, excited about in terms of future of mobility? What do you see uh, 2023, uh, you know, for in terms of e-mobility? You know, 2022 ended with a bang. We've had one million electric vehicles, you know, on, a, on, in, on Indian roads in this year. That's fabulous, right? In some sectors, they've gone six to eight X. So we're right at that point of inflection right now. Uh, we've got good policy. There's some fine tuning required. Um, you know, the GST side for uh, certain solutions for batteries are higher, and that should be helped. Um, subsidies and concessions should come for all forms of transportation, including battery swapping. These are important things that would create level playing fields that would help the industry significantly. The key now is also going to be infrastructure. Um, um, the, the government should lay out the sort of roads for infrastructure, but private industry should invest in it, right? So having electric connections available at uh, easily is going, going to be the role of the government. And if they can bring policies that enable that, you would see a lot of widespread infrastructure which will ensure that consumers, their concerns and range anxiety go away, because if they can swap their battery into a couple of minutes or charge it, they can look at this. So I see 2023 where we would see growth in all of these platforms. I see newer solutions coming around for first mile and last mile. I look at transportation being piloted in areas like now trucking, where we've already started buses, right? And I see infrastructure playing a large role. We've also talked about governments talking of new renewable energy policies, where above 100 kilowatts you could put connect renewable energy, which means if we can start to bring these infrastructure and connect it with renewable energy, we can then get green electrons to everyone's, uh, to everyone's vehicle, and that could truly create a green world for us. So I'm very bullish about these areas, where also renewable energy could play a larger role in our growth strategy of electric mobility. Also, when we talk about you know e-mobility, a lot has been said and done about the personal vehicle front, or you know even within commercial vehicles, the smaller commercial vehicles. But uh, what can we expect in terms of the you know uh, the uh, heavyweight commercial vehicles like the trucks and buses? Do you see something on that front also happening in India this year? So you put a very important point, right? Trucks and buses are two two percent of our fleet, but they are forty percent of our energy and emissions. So we have to look at it. So on one side, it's two and three wheelers, which are 80% of the fleet in the country. And that's why we've also been focusing on swapping solutions around that. Buses, I think, have moved forward now, right? The government is looking at 50,000 new buses coming out, electric buses. They've just had allocated tender of around 6,000 buses very recently in the last week or so, which is very positive. I would see pilots in trucking this year both at the um, smaller form factors of the 1.5 ton for in-city movement, but I also start to see in larger formats uh, in, um, in ports and cement and other areas starting. And I think that would be very useful, very helpful as we accelerate our electric mobility direction. Right. Thank you, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Uh, it was a very insightful chat with you. Thanks a lot, Chetan. Thank you so much.